A family struggles for survival in the face of a catastrophic natural disaster. Yo, what's going on everybody and welcome back to my channel Movie Files. Elliot back again with a brand new movie review and this time it's for the new disaster film starring Gerard Butler. We're talking about Greenland. Very excited to let you all know what I thought about this movie and let you know if it's worth checking out whenever it comes to theaters because it got delayed recently to the fourth quarter of this year. We'll see, but very excited to let you all know what I thought about it in this non-spoiler review. Before we dive into this review here, as you can see on the screen now make sure you're following me on all my other social media accounts that way you can stay up to date with what's going on over here at movie files as well as get some of my insight on some of the latest movie and tv news out there if you are new to this channel welcome definitely subscribe and while you're at it hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my new movie reviews tv reviews live streams and all the fun things we do over here at movie files it would mean a lot to me if you gave this video a thumbs up not only does it help out the channel but i also really appreciate it and last but certainly not least let me know if you were excited for this film once you've seen the trailer if you're a fan of Gerard Butler and once you've seen this film whenever it comes out let me know your pros your cons and let me know if this is one of your favorite or least favorite disaster movies in recent memory so Greenland saw the trailer and this is before I even kick these things off I've said in other reviews before there are certain movies that you know what to expect for whether it be from the trailer from the synopsis from the poster you kind of know what to expect especially in, in the disaster film there are very 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 similar beats that you see in a lot of these films there is a separation of the family they get separated here and there they have these ridiculous situations so you kind of know what to expect but I did not expect some of the things I saw in this film. We're going to break it down in this non-spoiler review, but starting off with some of the positive things I have to say about this film. First and foremost, I will say, the setup, the first 10, 15 minutes or so, setting up this whole situation where there's this comet that's coming to Earth in a few days and will likely cause an extinction to humanity it was very intriguing. And seeing how our characters interacted with those news and how they were just kind of nonchalant, the newscast was just like, ha, 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 it's going to miss us. It's, it, it made it very relatable because as we all know in the world we're living in now, this pandemic was handled extremely poorly without getting too political in this review, but we all know how, you know, people are not wearing their mask and not social distancing and all that stuff. It kind of was like, okay, this is relatable, which is, you know, you, you always want to find that relatability factor when you're watching a movie and seeing how they're, again, underplaying the situation. And then also, too, uh, seeing the, without getting into the spoilers, but there are certain people in this film that get notified about, okay, no, this is serious, so you have to go to this flight, you have to get in these bunkers, and they're how they picked and choose who are the people they're going to continue civilization, potentially, was very interesting. And I will say there was uh, a bit of stress going on in this movie for the good and for the bad and I'll talk about that a little bit later as far as frustrations with some of the character decisions but you know leading up to okay our character is getting to this flight and, and running to traffic it was very tre stressful like oh man are they going to make it so that was kind of intriguing for the first 15 minutes or so and then I would applaud our two main characters played by Gerard Butler who let's just face it he's keeping the B movies alive guys he is like the Arnold Schwarzenegger of our time the Sylvester Stallone he continuously are making these type of movies disaster films like Geostorm and this film and many others he's doing the fallen universe films with the president and all that stuff and he, Gerard Butler is I applaud him and he always regardless of the quality of the film he always is he's given the best that he can in the role and I, and I can applaud him for playing John our main character he's not a you know an assassin he's not a uh, you know an MMA fighter he's just a structural engineer in this film and, and he's just very basic <laughs> and he played to that basic level of his character and also uh Morena Bakanin who plays Alice and his wife she's a fantastic actress you know I, I love her and everything I'm pretty much seeing her in especially the Deadpool world so I thought that her you know I applaud their commitment and I'll just leave it at that the performance was fine the character decisions we're not, which leads me into my criticisms with this film. I don't want to make this into a rant. I don't want to spend 20 minutes talking about the things I did not like, and there's a lot of them. I'm just going to focus on the main things uh, and, and, and try to uh, simplify it as much as I can. Just starting off, first and foremost, the direction and the writing. You have director Rick Roman Wah, who directed a film, uh, what, seven years ago, Snitch with uh, The Rock. He wrote and directed the film. I, I thought that was a really good direction there. And then the writer, Chris Sparling, who directed or wrote films like Barry. Uh, the Ryan Reynolds film that came out 2010 and ATM that came out 2012 two interesting films that had some life some personality to the script 
None of that was in this film. There is no personality in this film whatsoever. It is very lacking. Those are the two worst parts of this movie is the direction, and I should say the lack of direction, and the lack of interesting dialogue. Those are the two worst parts of this film, and fundamentally speaking, just makes this film really bad, in my opinion. And other things, too, the actual world-ending disaster is barely in this film. And when it is in the film, it's seen on the television screen. We're seeing other uh, countries and states be destroyed by this comet. And we're not actually seeing it in the screen in real life. And there are, like, like I said, a handful of times in the film where you're seeing, you know, airplanes explode. You're seeing the aftermath of the, you know, the impact of the comet. But it's like literally, it's, it's, not, a, it's not the disaster film that the trailer makes it out to be it's more of a family drama more than anything but again the way they handled it it was just extremely underwhelming the lack of action and entertainment really highlighted the lack of character development but also this is probably my biggest thing with this film I did not care for this family at all all the decisions that this family made John and Alice and their little boy Nathan oh my gosh it was just so frustrating to see very early on as you know like I said there are tropes in this film very early on you know there's a family that's like please take take us or not me but take my daughter and they no minor spoiler they say no they do not take the daughter with them and you're seeing this family as the film goes on things don't go according to plan so when they're given the opportunity to say hey you know John and Alice and Nathan were like, hey, help us, please save us. The families that they interact with are a lot more giving. And the, oh my gosh, John and Allison, the stuff they do in this film, like in the simple fact that they just put, I get it. They have to survive, right? And and I get that, right? But the the numerous, the once I'm okay with, maybe twice, but the continuous amount of times that John and Allison put their lives in front of everyone else's and they were more important than everyone else, that made me not like this family at all. And there were so many times in this film where they were just, they were the number one priority. There's a scene in this film, and I won't say when it takes place and who's involved, but there are characters in this film, our main characters, that there's literally a plane taking off. And John takes a truck and stops this, this plane and say, hey, if you don't take us on this flight, we're not going to allow you guys to take flight, which means that the kids on the plane, the families on this plane are less important than they are. So I hated this family, hated them to the core because it was just so frustrating to see them continuously put their lives before everyone else. And it just made me hate these characters. And that just sucks because you don't root for the characters. I didn't care if they made it out of the situation because they can care less about humanity. They can care less about anyone else other than themselves. I'm sorry I went on a little rant there. The second half of this film is by far the worst part because it is a snooze fest. Again, you would think that this is when the action is going to take place. The world's falling apart. No, our families are split apart and we're just watching them walking around. Literally, this film forgets that it's a disaster film. There's literally a scene where uh, Allison is on a highway and you could just tell that they just shot this in Atlanta. And there's you would think that it's a world in the film and that traffic would be going one way. But no, it's just regular traffic. It's just a regular day. It's just like nothing's going on. People forgot that there's a comment. The film forgot that this is a disaster film. And it was just a snooze fest uh, all the way through for most of the film, especially when things are supposed to pick up. It does not do that. Again, I talked about the family stuff. There's a particular tension between the husband and wife. I won't get into what John and Allison, but literally this film decides to tell you what's going on. With 15 minutes left in the film, we find out why there's tension in the family. I thought it was just ridiculous. Again, the lack of stakes, the lack of care for these characters made this film just a a, a chore to get through. It, it, this was not an entertaining film. It lacked stake. It lacked character development. Again, I can't fault the performances because they did exactly what they were given, which was terrible dialogue, character, terrible direction, and this is just a bad film. With that being said, I'm giving Greenland a 1.5 out of 5. I'm giving it that 0. .5 because... I applaud the, the the commitment to the characters, even though they were terrible characters, and I hated this family so much. At least they they tried. I can I can applaud them for that. But again, guys, I don't know when this movie is coming out. I have a I don't have a clue. I know it came out overseas earlier this summer, but I don't. I think literally the other day I read an article that they're pushing this film back to the fourth quarter of 2020, which I don't know when that's going to come out. But if you want to see it, whenever it does come up, uh, come out. You've been warned. I'll just say that. So 1.5 out of 5 for Greenland for me. I did not like this film at all. This is one of the worst films I've seen this this year. This is literally the most boring disaster film I've seen probably ever. 
<laughs> to be honest with you all. But that's just my thoughts. Hey, if you see this film and you love it, you're you're loving the family drama and the lack of action, the lack of entertainment, the lack of like stakes, then hey, kudos to you, my friend. But nevertheless, make sure to like this video, share this video, and comment below. Comment about the lack of comment in the in this film. Let me know if you're excited for this movie. If you've seen the film, obviously let me know your thoughts and let's have some great discussions in the comments below. As always, make sure to check out all my other content on this uh, channel, whether it be movie reviews, TV reviews, live streams, and all the great things we do on this channel. I thank you guys for the continued support. Thank you for watching this review. Hope you're staying safe and we'll see you on the next video.